Hi Boat Builders, Larry Lalone here with Geodesic Airline Boats. Uh, welcome back to the shop. We haven't done this in a while. Um, might turn out to be a little bit choppy, but we'll do our best. So we're going to do two videos today. The first one we're going to talk about uh, a couple new things that we're building boats out of. One is uh, poplar. It's not a new wood, but we're using it differently. And the other is the new heavyweight Dacron that we carry that we're very excited about. So we're going to cover Dacron, or we're going to cover the poplar first. This is the poplar boat. Um, we've used it in some of our other boats. We've used it for the stringers and the long pieces, but we've never tried to bend it and make ribs out of it before. Um, so this one we decided just to go ahead and build the whole boat out of poplar. Uh, floorboards obviously are cedar. The deck is just made up of uh, some scraps I had laying around, and that's plywood, but the rest of the boat is all poplar. And if you look at the poplar ribs, there's some spare ones I had, they look... They don't look tough. I mean, they look like they're fairly light wood, but if you do the fingernail test, you absolutely cannot dig into this stuff. It's a good, tough wood. And it's easy to work with. It cuts well, it sands well, it takes, uh, it takes finishes well, it glues well. And so we've always, uh, we've always recommended using ash and uh, oak for the ribs, and that's what I've used in all of our other boats. This is the first one built with the poplar ribs, and very, very happy with the way it turned out. I think it's, uh, I think it's actually even tougher than the oak when, uh, when once it's in the boat and it's set. The oak seems almost brittle. I don't know if that's because I did something wrong to it. Uh, I was using kiln-dried oak. Uh, this stuff, I soaked it for about five hours in a hot water soak, and then did about 30 or 40 minutes in the steamer. Bent beautifully, held the shape beautifully, very happy with it. So I'd highly recommend trying poplar for the ribs. Uh, they are, if you look at our boats, they have all sorts of different size and spacing on the ribs. Uh, we'll go over and look at that boat in a minute. And what we've done is we've tried to, tried to figure out what the right size rib is to build a boat. And these are 3 16 by 5 8 and I think this is the right size rib. This is, this is what I'm going to use from now on for doing these uh, little solar canoes. And that's about it for poplar. It's just, uh, the, the construction doesn't change. It's just a new type of wood we haven't used before and it's turned out very, very well. So we're happy with it. Uh, now we're gonna talk about the heavyweight Dacron. So what we have here is, we've been carrying this since uh, sometime around Labor Day. I think maybe just after Labor Day we start carrying this. And this is a nine ounce Dacron. Our standard Dacron is 3.7 ounces. It's a good material, it's a good tough material. They, they cover airplanes with it and then they take them up thousands of feet in the air. So uh, you know it's tough enough to deal with that. But if you've uh, been to our website or you've ordered some of our materials or anything, you know that one of the things that Platt always struggled with was how to make this Dacron tougher. Whether it was covering it with uh, mylar or covering it with what he called elephant skin or putting two layers down. He was always trying to find ways to make the, the 3.7 ounce tougher. Well. We just finally, after several months of hunting, we found a source for nine ounce Dacron, and this stuff is really, really tough. Uh, my cameraman, Micah here, I gave him a test panel back, uh, back this summer, and he beat on it with a screwdriver and couldn't get through it. So it's, uh, we're, uh, we're pretty happy with this stuff. The, um, the thing about the Dacron, uh, people ask, how much weight does it add to the boat? Well, this boat, I got notes here somewhere on this boat, this boat weighed uh, about 13 and a half pounds with the regular Dacron on it. Uh, I took, there's my, here, just hang on just a second. There's my little, my, my cheat sheet here on this boat. Okay, so this boat, this is a 12 foot, six inch solo boat. Um, the boat, I weighed it before I took the skin off. It weighed 13 pounds, three ounces took the skin off. The frame without the skin on it weighed 10 pounds, eight ounces. And then I recovered it with the nine ounce Dacron and it weighed 14 pounds, uh, 13 ounces. So on a 12 foot, six inch boat, it added one pound, 10 ounces, but it still is a 14, almost 15 pound boat. It's a very light boat. So as you can see, this, it looks yellowish. It's not painted. This is actually just two coats of, uh, this is actually just two coats of Cabot, uh, spar varnish. And just kind of turn, it almost looks like a Kevlar material. It's, it's got that yellowish tint to it. Um, 
you can see it is it's just a pure white pure white piece of cloth um, this one is let me get on this side so you can kind of compare the two I don't know how much light you've got here but you can see this is with two coats of, of uh, Cabot spar varnish which I use a lot and this is with two coats of uh, Minwax spar urethane so you can see it's a little bit lighter color you just ignore the uh, ignore the glitter on there uh, we cover all the topics here. This is how, what's the proper way to apply glitter to a boat hull. Uh, the answer is you put down a coat of urethane and then use a glitter sprinkler, which I didn't even know there was such a thing, but it works. So it takes finishes very well. This boat, I built it uh, back in August, and I left it out here in the Georgia heat for, I think I left it out for about two weeks after it cured. I left it sitting out in the heat for two weeks. It didn't loosen up. Nothing happened to it. It got rained on. It got wet. Brought it inside. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we had some cold weather and some rain. I stuck it out in the 35 and 40 degree weather in the rain for another five days. It's just hasn't been paddled yet, but it's really very tight, holding up really well. There is one uh, trick to this stuff. People ask People ask, is it harder to work than the regular Dacron? And it is. It's a thicker material. It, uh, it takes more heat and more time to actually make it shrink down and bond. And on the sides, on our boat, right in here is, is the tough part to do on these boats. That's where the wrinkles are going to occur. And because this stuff is so thick, um, if you've got a wrinkle there, you don't get enough heat to the inside of the wrinkle to actually get it to shrink out. So I just took a little 2 by 4 and when you're shrinking it, of course the bolt will be upside down, so you just put that up against it and you run the iron against that 2x4 and that'll shrink it right down. Um, so yes, it is a little bit harder to work. Uh, I use a 1400 watt iron on this and I turn it up as high as it goes and it seems to work really well. Like I said, it shrinks, shrinks nicely, stays nice and tight. Really tough material. And uh, it, it, it does... Even though it's harder to work, you can do stuff with it. Now, this is this is my little little boat for my for my five year old granddaughter. So if anybody ever asks, you know, what type of boat do you build for a five year old who is convinced she's a princess and plans on riding a unicorn someday, this is what you would build for her. Um, but if you look at this boat, I don't know if you can get down kind of a little bit there, Mike, and see the sides, the curves from the ends. This boat has a lot of what's called tumble home. It, it curves in here quite a bit, and it's also got a very wide belly. It comes out here, it's got a pretty severe bend in it, and that's really tough. It's got, it's got some rock around the bottom, it's got a very quick wide belly here, and it's got a lot of tumble home going this way. So you're taking a flat piece of material, trying to bend it in three dimensions and get it tight, and you can see it, uh, it's fine. It's, it's very tight, came out very well. And so if you can make that material fit a bolt like this, you can make it fit a standard bolt. And uh, I think that's about it.